So I've been playing this game a lot, Project Diva X, here on the PS Vita, and uh, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, so I've got a few things that I want to say about it, but first, let's have some coffee. Ah, so Project Diva, I absolutely love this series, and I think someone mentioned that this is probably the tenth game in the console series, which is probably why it's called Project Diva X. Uh, but it has changed a few things about the game that um, I wasn't quite expecting, so uh, I thought I'd like to talk about them because um, I'm also going to put some gameplay maybe here, or here, it'll probably be there. Uh, I'll show you some gameplay of the of the actual game. But one of the main things that has changed in this game is that uh, it doesn't just give you a list of songs to play and then you just work through them. It's actually turned it into more of a a game, basically. It didn't always feel like a video game, but now it actually feels a bit more like an adventure. So actually, when you go into the game, you'll be met by characters who will talk to you and kind of say, oh, we're on this adventure to unlock all the different areas of magic and music, and there's five different areas, and we've got to unlock them one by one. So it's really interesting because uh, it's kind of more, it's more goal-oriented, it's like you've actually got to, you know, pull our resources together and we've actually got to unlock this area, but essentially, the gameplay is still the same, you know, you're going to be playing songs one after the other until you've unlocked all of them. Actually, I forgot that I was going to actually grind the coffee first. By the way, today's coffee is mandarin, or man mandolin, or mandarin, in, and uh, it's coffee from Indonesia, I believe. So just while I'm getting these beans out of here, I mean, I want to say right at the start that uh, I am really enjoying the game. I think there's plenty of improvements that have been done, lots of visual upgrades that I want to talk about as well. But when you first set foot into the game, it will greet you with this like visual novel type interface and Miku will actually start talking to you. And this is, it's really strange because I'm not used to having games where Miku actually kind of addresses you and speaks to you. Usually, I think of Miku, uh, Luca, and Rin, and Ren, and you know, Kaito, all of them. I think of them as a, a, a traveling group of, of traveling performers. Where's the thing? Ah, I think of them as like a group of traveling performers, and they can kind of be any character you like. So we don't. It's, it's a bit like watching an interview of your, like, your favorite uh, actor. And you know when sometimes you watch your inter the interviews and it's like, oh. They're actually not that cool in real life, or they're, they're not as cool as I thought, or they're not as nice as I thought, or not as funny as I thought. And that's exactly how it feels when you play uh, Project Diva. You'll turn it on, and uh, in, the, in the interface, you'll see Miku and she's talking to you. She's just like, we're all gonna do our best so that we can unlock the worlds of music. And you're like, yeah, who cares? Usually I'm used to seeing all these characters dressed up in fancy outfits, pretending to be clowns, or pretending to be Halloween creatures, or pretending to be princesses, or pretending to be anything. And they're acting, or they're all putting on this act because they're idols. And it's a little strange to actually see them in a more intimate s setting. And essentially I thought it was a little bit uh, disappointing. It's like, not the game's disappointing, just I was a bit let down by their personalities. And as you work through the visual novel aspect, so you keep talking to them and it's just like, Oh, Rin and Ren are having an argument. Oh, they can't decide who's better at being an idol, girls or boys. And it's like, I don't know, I, I, can, see where, I can see where they might argue about that sort of thing. But you start to realize they're not interesting characters at all. They're all just friends. It's a bit like if all the cast of Barney came together and tried to make a, a drama, it probably wouldn't be very interesting because there's no tension between any of the characters. They're all just friends and they all love each other. And it's just not as, uh, it's not riveting, it's not as riveting a story as I was expecting. Let's get this jug out and the uh, filter thing. And uh, where is my paper filter like this? Fold that, put that into the cup. It's going out the water. So this is pretty exciting for the um, water. Thanks for everyone who gave me advice about the temperature of the water. I actually went out and got a digital thermometer. I'll just show you quickly. So this is the uh, digital thermometer I've got now. It's just got this long metal stick that you just poke into the water and try to get it as close to the spout as possible. And then it will tell you the temperature of my hand. Hopefully it will tell me when it gets to, I don't know, roughly 90. I mean, maybe just over 90 or just under 90 might be best. So while I'm waiting for the water to hit the correct temperature, just keep talking about Project Diva. Uh, the music, I really enjoyed the music, but not all of the songs, and it's starting, now that you can only choose the songs by theme, it means that when you go through the f adventure for the first time, instead of giving you one rock song and then one sort of beautiful song and one then cute song, it actually gives you all five at the same time. 
So in a, in a way, you're kind of forced to go through all the cute songs, and then all the rock songs, and then all the beauty songs, and you can't really uh, choose either way. Actually, hold on, where's the coffee? In the previous games, you could actually, you know, go through all the songs, and there was quite a lot of variety. Sometimes a happy song, sometimes a sad song, sometimes an adventure song. But in the new uh, system, you have to do all the rock songs in a go, and then you have to do all the cute songs, and all the beauty songs. It doesn't really work for me, because uh, in the end, you end up doing all the rock songs, let's say that you prefer the rock songs. It means you end up doing all the songs you like and then kind of having to slog through all the songs that you're not a big fan of. Which is a real shame to me because I preferred, you know, being forced to go through the other songs just every now and then. And then by the end you just magically happen to finish all the songs, including the ones you don't even like. And it's natural. It's natural you are going to dislike a few of the songs because they're not all your your style. So that was a gripe for me not being able to choose the music. Something that is nice about the music however is that there's now a new uh, medley feature and at the end of each of these five zones when you finish all the rock songs they'll have like a rock medley and you'll do the medley and the, the medleys are pretty good actually. I think they're pretty well put together and uh, they do <laughs> they do add something to the experience. One of the issues however is that the uh, the s songs are all done on a stage. So in the previous versions of Project Diva, there were actually lots of different stages and they're all very dramatic, like a person running after a train or a person flying through space or a person doing some kind of crazy battle against some kind of enemy. But in the new version of Project Diva X, or this version, Project Diva X, all of the shows are done on one stage and they don't move anywhere, they just stay on that stage. And the reason they do that is because in edit mode and also in the sort of create your own event, uh, your own concert mode, they just want you to have ultimate flexibility, so you can choose your own stage, your own music, your own costumes, your own uh, conditions of completion and all that. You can do everything uh, completely customized, which is really great, but it means that uh, it's actually not so interesting in the background. I've actually got a new cup as well, forgot to mention this, uh, it's one of these it's not a thermos, but it's one of these vacuum flask cups. It's got like a, a vacuum layer around the edges, which means that it stays hot or it stays cool. The problem is when you're having like a nice hot drink, uh, the temperature doesn't actually f filter through to your hand, so you're like holding a hot chocolate and the cold, the cup is actually pretty cold, which is a shame. Coffee time! Mmm, mandarin, or mandaling, or mandarin. Don't know the correct. Whoa! Oh, I hate when I spill the coffee. So in addition to the fact that the whole system is based up on stages and live stages, concert stages, uh, which means that the backgrounds are not that interesting, um, there's also this thing about the way that you collect costumes. Now I was under the impression that it was similar to previous games, and it turns out that uh, a few things have changed now. Instead, you'll be playing through the game and you'll be collecting electricity. So the, the more accurate you press the buttons, the more accurately you press the buttons, the more voltage you get. By the middle of the stage, you will have the chance to unlock um, a, a costume. And most of the time, if you're fairly good at the game, you will unlock the costume, but you don't know which one you're going to unlock. Sometimes you unlock a costume that you already have, and other times you unlock a costume that, most of the time, you unlock a costume that you don't yet have. And sometimes they actually say, like, rare costume. I don't really know what the difference is between the rare costumes and not so rare costumes. Uh, but it does, I actually really enjoy that aspect of the game. In the previous games, it was a bit of a grind. You would just kind of play through the songs over and over again until you had enough points. And then you would just buy the costumes you want. And once you've bought, like, the, the ten, five or ten costumes that you want, you don't even really bother because there's, like, 90 other costumes that you don't even like anyway or if they're for characters you don't like. So this version... At least, you know, you just choose the character at the start and then it will win a costume for them as long as you've collected enough points. So that does work really, really well. It's just that <laughs> it does take, I think it, it, in the end, it will just take longer to get to costumes that you like. Uh, so if you can deal with the fact that you can't have exactly what you want when you want it, then it's act and I would say that it makes it a little bit more enjoyable. But something I don't like uh, is this whole, is the difficulty aspect. So n in the previous games, uh, uh, it just had a list of songs, which made it not feel very game-like, it was just kind of arcade -y. But now it's more like a console game. You play through the story, uh, sort of, there's sort of a story, and then you go to the songs. 
and you have to go through easy you have to go through easy or normal mode for every different song and if you want to play hard or extreme which is where it actually becomes fun you have to go to a separate mode it's called sub mode and in sub mode you can play hard and you can play extreme but it's not it doesn't help you win costumes. So in the previous games, I would actually play I would play hard and extreme and collect loads of points because it was harder and you would get more points. And then you would use those extra points to go and buy the costumes that you wanted. Now, in order to get costumes, you have to play normal mode even though even though you've already unlocked hard mode and extreme mode. So it's like, why do I have to keep playing the easy versions of the levels just to get costumes? Either, actually, if in fact, if you know how to change that, maybe if you know a way to just complete, to just play the hard mode and extreme modes and still win the costumes, do let me know in the cost uh, in the costumes <laughs> in the com comment section because I, I really want to know how to do it and I can't figure it out. So that's one thing that really annoys me is being forced to play easy mode or normal mode just to get the costumes when I want to play hard mode and still have the power to unlock costumes. Something that has been introduced which is really cool is in the story section, so in at the end of every song or before a song starts there will be a, a mini story section. It really is very very short so it's not like it gets in the way. Sometimes the characters will interact with you and they'll say like so I've been thinking I'd like to have a bit more fun recently, do you have anything fun? And then you'll be brought to a list where they'll show you all the items that you have received after playing songs, like the drops, so they get dropped randomly, and some are rare and some are not rare, so if, again, more like a smartphone, more like a smartphone. And uh, by choosing a drop that you think is going to fit the question, you can you can make them happier and you can increase your, I don't know, friendship with each character. And each, I think it's, actually it's really funny because I've also been playing a lot of um, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 and turns out some of the most, one of the most important parts of this game as well is becoming friends with the different girls or not like, I think maybe something special happens if you become really special friends with them. So in Project Diva X it's the same, you can actually increase your, your level of friendship which I assume is going to increase the ability to get more points in the game. And it's quite fun because they'll ask you like, I'm, I've been kind of hungry recently, like do you have any food that you would recommend for me? And sometimes they don't like the food, and sometimes they, they do like the food, it's quite funny, I like it. In terms of gameplay actually, some things that I really like are there are a few more options for the sounds. I, I didn't like it at first, but I, I got used to it. When you pull down the button, uh, it will actually like shake a tambourine, it'll make this shaking tambourine sound. And I think that comes from Project Mirai, and I used to... I used to dislike that sound, um, but then I switched it off and I tried to play a level and I was like, where's the sound? I feel It feels wrong to play a level without that tambourine sound. So I've actually switched it back on. I quite enjoyed that. Also, apparently this was possible in, in Project Diva F second. Uh, I don't really know if it was like either analog stick or not analog stick, but with the scratching sounds, it actually works with both. So you can have it, um, so you can be playing the game and when you see the stars on screen, you can scratch your fingers on the screen or you can scratch, you can just hit the analog stick. And I, I love that you can have both on at the same time because sometimes I just can't be bothered to scratch the screen and I'll use the analog stick and it's more accurate. But then other times I kind of like, uh, why not scratch the screen? It's kind of more fun. If even if I, Especially if I'm not playing super extreme mode, I'm just kind of having a bit of fun. Um, scratching the screen kind of uh, is kind of more enjoyable, again, in, in some ways. The graphics in this game are are incredible. I don't know what they've done. First of all, this opening movie doesn't use the uh, Project Diva Future Tone arcade machine graphics. It uses the console version graphics, which I actually personally prefer. It looks a little bit more real or a bit more anime. In the arcade version, it looks kind of doll-like. I think they pucker their lips or something, which makes them look kind of like weird dolls. I don't, I don't like it so much. I prefer this style, so I'm really happy that the opening movie was done in this style. And, as it turns out, since they've changed this, this whole method of having all the characters on stages instead of having them, you know, in these dramatic sequences where they're flying left and right and running around, keeping them on one stage probably means they had more resources to create better graphics. So I think that the graphics look really, really good. And uh, they've also added these extra effects, like uh, they like kind of add bokeh in the background, and they blur out certain things, and they have these glittery effects. Everything about it looks a little bit more cinematic than the previous game, if, if that's even possible. So I think they've really done a very good uh, job with the graphics. It looks really, really nice. But I mean, essentially that is it. The newest thing it really is the special event quests. And uh, it's like every now and then, it seems kind of random or maybe it goes with the story, they'll say like, here's a special event quest. And the event quest is always 
choose three songs and then play them in order. And uh, for some reason, the special event quests always force you to use easier or normal mode, which I don't want to play. Once I've unlocked the songs hard mode and extreme modes, I don't ever want to play normal again because you only use two buttons, even though the console has, you know, four buttons on the front. I want to use all the buttons, and it kind of really bugs me. So I would prefer if this event quest thing uh, allowed you to use hard mode. Again, if you know how to unlock it or make it work, uh, do let me know. I just haven't figured it out. I mean, I haven't completed the game. I just thought I'd make a video about sort of first impressions of how I'm feeling about Project Diva X. Uh, I, I love... Uh, there are some songs that are just amazing. I absolutely love them. My favorite song by far on this new game now is called Raspberryism. I think I think it's called Raspberryism. I actually did like fan art about the song because I liked this song so much before the game released. And now that I'm actually able to play it, it's just I love this song so much. Raspberryism is really really good. So I'm waiting until I can get the uh, costume for that. Anyway, Project Diva X. It's a good game. It is a good game and it's solid, but it does change a few things. So be be warned that it won't be quite the same experience. Usually with Project Diva, it's always the same. Go in, play easy and normal, and then get hard and extreme, and then you continue to just play the la play the lane, play the game until you get enough points for the costumes. In this version, there's a story aspect, which is a little disappointing because the characters are flat and uninteresting. Uh, because they're supposed to be flat and uninteresting, because they are actors. So I don't, I didn't, wasn't so keen on the visual novel aspect. I think the um, becoming friends with the characters is quite cool. They ask you questions, I feel like that makes it more personal. I like the gameplay, I like the extra sounds, I like the way that you unlock the costumes. I like most of the music, a few songs, again, not big fan of but um, most of the music I do really enjoy. And uh, yeah, just a few weird quirks that I can't figure out, like why do I have to use easy and normal mode for all of the special event quests? And why can't I unlock costumes using hard mode and extreme mode? Why do I, basically, Sega, why are you forcing me to play easy and normal mode when I've, like, you know, most people have played nine other Project Diva games. They don't need to be forced to play easy and normal on every level. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to say about Project Diva X. It's it's go it's awesome. I really, really enjoy it. And uh, hopefully I've been able to post enough gameplay for you to get a, a gist of what it looks like. Um, some people were mentioning maybe making a tutorial about the buttons, so if I have time, I might try and make a tutorial about uh, how to go through the menus. But so far, that's uh, how I feel about the game. Uh, maybe I might make another update when I have actually completed the game, <laughs> if I ever complete the game. And as you know, I rarely complete games. So there you go, Project Diva X. It's good. And this coffee also. Thanks Indonesia, enjoying this uh, Mandarin coffee. As always, if you enjoyed this video, uh, do give it a like. And if you'd like to suggest anything else for this series or, you know, anything else you'd like me to talk about, do put it in the comments section as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And, uh, of course, I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video. She's got magnets on her feet. First new Nintendo 3DS game. Final Fantasy XV! Ah! Someone pick up the phone! How about you, Cloud? It's shopping time! So I let her go in front of me, and she ran into the shop and she took the only copy of this, and I thought, no! Here it comes! Oh! It's like the anime, but better! It doesn't say what this is, it just, it just, it's just a piece of plastic. I, I really think, I think, I think maybe it, it is a frisbee.